the Principia. Newton gives us a, the preface. Since the ancients, as we are told by Pappus, notice that Newton is already quoting someone of old, who, who we'll talk about later, made great account of the science of mechanics in the investigation of natural things, and the moderns, laying aside substantial forms and occult qualities, have endeavored to, study, to, to subject the phenomena of nature to the laws of mathematics. I have in this treatise cultivated mathematics so far as it regards philosophy. The ancients considered mechanics in a twofold respect, as rational, which proceeds accurately by demonstration, and practical. To practical me mechanics, all the manual arts belong, from which mechanics took his name. But as artificers do not work with perfect accuracy, it comes to pass that mechanics is so distinguished from geometry that what is perfectly accurate is called geometrical, what is less so is called mechanical. But the errors are not in the art, but in the artificers. He that works with less accuracy is an, imper is, is an imperfect mechanic, and if any could work with perfect accuracy, he would be the most perfect mechanic of all. For the description of right lines and circles, upon which geometry is founded, belongs to mechanics. Geometry does not teach us to draw these lines, but requires them to be drawn, for it requires that the learner should first be taught to describe these accurately before he enters upon geometry. Then it shows how, by these operations, problems may be solved. To describe right lines and circles are problems, but not geometrical problems. The solution of these problems is required from mechanics, and by geometry the use of them, when so solved, is shown. And it is the glory of geometry that from those few principles brought from without, it is able to produce so many things. Therefore, geometry is founded in mechanical practice, and it's nothing but that part of universal mechanics which accurately proposes and demonstrates the art of measuring. But since the manual arts are chiefly conversant in the moving of bodies, it comes to pass that geometry is commonly referred to their magnitudes and mechanics to their motion. In this sense, rational mechanics will be the science of motions resulting from any forces whatsoever, and of the forces required to produce any motions accurately proposed and demonstrated. This part of mechanics was cultivated by the ancients in the five powers which relate to manual arts who considered gravity. It is not being a manual power, no otherwise than it as it moved weights by these power by those powers. Please note that Newton here is talking about geometry, and one of the books I recommend in geometry in this classical movement of STEM excellence is Euclid's elements of geometry. It's available online for free. I highly recommend reading that as well and getting familiar with it. We provide some of that in our book, Counting to Calculus, the workbook, the third book, which is focused on geometry and trigonometry. Newton is going to talk about gravity in this book, of course, and of course later on we find out that Einstein's theory of general relativity is going to quite bring some of this to question. Uh, but know that in 1687 when this is uh, released it's written a little before that but when it's released this was the best explanation and the most comprehensive that we had the principia is one of the greatest books we've ever had in the history of science so our design not respecting arts but philosophy and our subject not manual but natural powers we consider chiefly the, those things which relate to gravity levity elastic force the resistance of fluids and like forces whether attractive or impulsive and therefore we offer this work as the mathematical principles of philosophy for all the difficulty of philosophy seems to consist in this from the phenomena of motions to investigate the forces of nature and then from these forces to demonstrate the other phenomena. And to this end, the general propositions in the first and second book are directed. In the third book, we give an example of this in the explication of the system of the world. For by the propositions mathematically demonstrated in the former books, we in the third derive from the celestial phenomena the forces of gravity with which bodies tend to the sun and the several planets. Then from these forces, by other propositions, which are also mathematical, we deduce the motions of the planets, the comets, the moon, and the sea. I wish we could derive the rest of the phenomena of nature by the same kind of reasoning from mechanical principles, for I am induced by many reasons to suspect that 
may, that may all depend upon forces by which the particles of bodies by some courses hitherto unknown are either mutually impelled towards each other and cohere in regular figures or are repelled and recede from each other which forces being unknown philosophers have hitherto attempted the search of nature in vain but i hope the principles here laid down will afford some light either to this or some truer method of philosophy wow newton is talking about uh you know this is what we have right now this is an explanation this is a good explanation of course i would say but he's given us something to work with that again people after him will build upon it people after him will fine tune what he's doing and it's amazing to think that we are reading this now knowing about maxwell and einstein and what will you and i do now in light of understanding some of the problems that newton said we potentially you know we don't have an answer to at the time and even today in 2024 we don't have the answer to some of the questions in physics but just the art of spending time thinking about these issues i think is very good in the publication of this work the most acute and universally learned mr edward haley not only assisted me with his pains in correcting the press and taking care of the schemes but it was to his solicitations that it's becoming public is owing for when he had obtained of me my demonstrations of the figure of the celestial orbits he continually pressed me to communicate the same to the royal society who afterwards by their kind encouragement and their entreaties engaged me to think of publishing them but after i had begun to consider the inequalities of the lunar motions and had entered upon some other things relating to the laws and measures of gravity and other forces and the figures that would be described by bodies attracted according to the given laws and the motion of several bodies moving among themselves the motion of bodies in resisting mediums the forces densities and motions of mediums the orbits of the comets and such like deferred that publication till i had made a search into those matters and could put forth the whole together what relates to the lunar motions being imperfect i have put all together in the corollaries of proposition 66 or prop 66 to avoid being obliged to propose and distinctively demonstrate the several things that they can there contained in a method more prolix than the subject deserved and interrupt the series of the several propositions some things found out after the rest i chose to insert in places less suitable rather than change the number of propositions and the citations i hardly bring i hardly brag that what i have here done may be read with candor and that the defects in a subject so difficult be not so much reprehended as kindly supplied and investigated by new endeavors by my readers you know if you go back to the biography which is uh, this particular edition gives the biography of newton it's actually an interesting section here that it, that that talks about what Newton said of himself. Let's go back. Um, Newton's uh, story is told all the way to the end of of his life, um, but he made a very interesting comment. He says, you know, basically, uh, you know, he 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 says, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself in now and then, finding a smoother pebble or prettier shell than ordinary, while the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. How few ever reach the shore even, much less find a smoother pebble or a prettier shell. So, Newton clearly made the case that you and I can discover more, and we should discover more. So that's his preface. We will press into book one, um, that will be our next episode. We'll go deeper, but let's just look at the definition one and two, and then we'll stop. It says, definition one, the quantity of matter is the measure of the same arising from its density and bulk conjunctly. Definition two, the quantity of motion is the measure of the same arising from the velocity and quantity of matter conjunctly. We are going to study more of Newton's um, mathematical principles. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to subscribe, like, and share. We will be studying math classically, and the Newton's Principia is one of our first books. Um, let's remember also, ultimately, that Newton did not have the answer to why the universe existed. For that, he said that they had to be an intelligent and powerful being. So, I agree with Newton. The heavens declare the glory of God. Take care, and have a blessed day.